today is Thursday, October 25th, 2018. My name is Kara Neuror. I'm a library professor for the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at the Oklahoma State University Library. I'm here today at the library doing an oral history interview with David Henry Purdy. And David, I just want to say thank you for coming uh, for the interview today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, let's start with a little information about your family background. Where are you from originally? Yes, yeah, so I grew up in a military family and we traveled kind of all over the world. Um, we lived in South Korea for a little bit and I ended up finding our way back to Oklahoma um, where I went to high school at a lot in Oklahoma. And what is your family's educational background? Uh, my mom, she only finished about, uh, I think it was elementary or junior high school level education. Um, she's from Korea, and my father completed his college degree uh, after I had completed mine. And so um, I consider my brother and myself kind of first generation college students. Is your brother older or younger? He's three years older than myself. Okay. Yeah. Did you have any other, uh, did he come to Oklahoma State University? He did not. He went to Cameron University, which is also in Oklahoma, and he went there on an ROTC scholarship. Okay. So you were the first in the family to come to OSU? I was, and hopefully many more to come. <laughs> okay. So what led to your decision to attend OSU? You know, I, I originally did not want to come to Oklahoma State. I was looking at the other Oklahoma schools. Um, Oklahoma State wasn't even in my purview to even attend here. And I had a really good friend who, um, whose name was Alex. He passed away a couple years ago. He had egged me on in high school to do a tour with him. And he was like, hey, you should come up to Oklahoma State. Um, it's a great school. Like my, my parents went there. It's a great place to be. I was like, okay, I'll go with you just on the tour because we get out of school. And that first minute I stepped on campus, I saw everyone laughing and all the community involvement. Students were on campus doing activities. The tour guides were amazing. The football stadium caught my eye. And so I just fell in love with it after that first day. And I knew immediately, like, I don't want to go to any other school. And I remember telling my parents that, and they're like, how can one trip really change your mind? And, and OSU made a lasting impression for me. Was that your junior or senior year of high school? It was my, I believe it was the beginning of my senior year uh, of high school in that spring semester. Okay, so you didn't apply to any other colleges after that? Nope, did not. This was my one and only. <laughs> Where did you live when you were a student here? I lived in the Village Dormitory. I believe it was Village E, and then I moved to Village D um, in, in the Res Life community. I lived there my first year. Uh, second year, I ended up studying abroad um, in South Korea through through Oklahoma State. Um, but and then after that, I came back and I just lived on various parts around Stillwater. Okay, so you were off campus after that? After that, yeah. Correct. Tell me about your study abroad experience. Yeah, so I, after my freshman year, you know, being a new student, I was very introverted. And I had met uh, Miss Catherine Vijay Kumar, who was one of the Asian American advisors in the Institutional Diversity Department. And she kind of took me under her wing and really challenged me to get more involved on campus, get more outgoing, try to try to get leadership positions. Um, and I was really scared as a freshman. I didn't know really what I wanted to do or what I, what I wanted to see. And she knew my background was in Korea. And she's like, you should try to study abroad. And I'm a, a freshman, like, I don't really want to do that. It's, it's kind of scary to go to a different country by yourself. And she kept pushing me to do it. And I ended up getting accepted to Yonsei University who has a partnership with our school. It's the number two school in South Korea. So what is the name of the university again? Uh, Yonsei. How do you spell that? Y-O-N-S-E-I. Okay. And it's part of what the Korean university is called, the Sky Group. And it's top three um, fit in this criteria to be the top school there. And she helped me get a scholarship to go to that school for two semesters, a summer and a fall. And uh, I learned so much about myself, um, so much about kind of being on your own and the struggles that you would go through. You know, of course, you know, I know Korean. I don't, I don't speak it fluently, but I know enough to get around. Um, and I, I'm so thankful for meeting Miss Catherine Vijay Kumar because of, she, you know, even after I came back from studying abroad, she pushed me to get more involved. She said, okay, now that you're back, you should find leadership positions. You need to go get scholarships. You, you need to figure out what you really wanted to do. Because I was very lost with what I wanted to study. And in South Korea, I took, you know, the Korean language courses, a business course. I took genetics in Korean, which was the hardest class I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> and um, very, very challenging. And I came back and I told her, you know, I, I really like communicating with people and talking to people a lot. Is there like a program here that I could maybe take an elective 
or, or, or one course to learn more about PR. So I took the Public Relations 101 as my elective while I was a microbiology major um, because of Miss Catherine Vijay Kumar. And I took a, a course by, uh, he's a visiting professor at the time, Bill Handy. And he taught me about relationship building. And I was like, this is really cool. I didn't know there was an art to communications. And so I had um, took one class and he sold me. I went to my advisor and I said, hey, is there a way I could double major in communications and microbiology? And she looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and I did it for uh, two semesters. And I ended up dropping the microbiology degree with only a few uh, classes left and went full force with communications, stayed an extra year to finish that up. And uh, you know, wound up at AT and T after that. Well, that's a great story. Yeah. Um, who else comes to your mind when you think about the faculty or staff that influenced you along the way when you were a student here? Yeah, definitely my advisor Karen, uh, both Karen and Mary, in the Paul Miller School of Journalism. Um, whenever I, I, you know, I was an untraditional student. I came into the program as kind of a uh, end of sophomore year, beginning of junior year, and they're like. You want to start all over like this this is this is going to be a lot of work you're gonna to have to take a little more classes than the normal student I'm like i'm willing to do it i really love love what the art of communication means to me and, and karen worked very closely with me to make sure i could graduate on time um, and made sure that you know i was taking all the courses that i needed to to become successful in what i wanted to do in my future what is her so. last name Karen Christensen, I believe, is her last name. And was she your advisor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's still the advisor over there um, today. Okay, have and you seen so, her today? Yeah, I saw her this morning. I, w I did my rounds and I went and, go and saw, um, like, uh, I worked as an orientation leader for a little bit. I saw Missy and Poppy over there in the, in the student union, um, and, and I just kind of walked around just to go see who was all here. Um, I, worked, I worked for Dr. Bird for a little bit as well. I, I love Dr. Bird. She is so passionate about helping students and helping people. Um, I worked in her office for about a year and a half as an as a intern, um, and that was a very, very rewarding job to be a part of um, student affairs. Have you seen her since you have been back today? I have not. She, um, I heard that she had foot surgery, so I wasn't able to catch her. Um, you know, Dr. Kirksey is also a key figure who helped push me um, within the Institutional Diversity Department. Whenever I was, I believe it was a sophomore, junior year, um, Dr. Kirksey had a, a position within student government that was kind of a diversity chair as part of SGA. And um, I, I went for it and ended up getting picked to lead that one up. And that position had me work very closely with Dr. Kirksey on initiatives for um, increasing diversity awareness on the campus in general. And I was able to help influence student government so that way we would fund more student organizations to go do more activities. I was taking folks to bowl games, to football games out of state, to conferences. Um, Dr. Kirksey really helped us get the funds that we needed to get to take groups of students to expose them to conferences. And I would say without Dr. Kirksey being that key person here to help all the minorities on campus, I don't, I don't know if that, that push would be here, right? Um, so with, without him, I don't think that I would have had the opportunities and the runway to take leadership positions in the multicultural clubs, um, to take people on trips and be that leader, um, just exposing students to things that they've never experienced before. So some of the groups that you were active in, the Student Government Association, uh, you were the diversity director? Yes. Okay. And you were a member of the SGA Multicultural Affairs Committee? I was. I led that committee up. And that's the committee that I had mentioned that we got all those funds from Dr. Kirksey. And I, he gave me the money. I forgot what the figure was. And he said, you're responsible for this for each semester and you need to form a committee to decide what organizations can apply to get funding. And I was like, this is great, because now we actually have money to go do things. Before we had that initiative and got that money, we were fundraising, we were struggling to get you know, students to go places, and we can only send a couple of students. You know, and uh, over time, once Dr. Christie got that budget, we were able to, to take people places that they would never have the opportunity to go to. Like, I remember we took folks to the Fiesta Bowl game in Arizona, um, that was like 2012, maybe 2011. I think. And all the students we took, they got to go for free. We rented a charter bus. We got hotel rooms paid for. We got the whole, all the tickets paid for through Dr. Kirksey and other sponsors. And myself included and all these other uh, folks in the multicultural organizations would never have that opportunity to go to those types of uh, events without him, you know, without his funding. So it was just really awesome that he's very supportive and, and really uh, pushes the mission of inclusion. About how many students went on that trip? We had two busloads, wow. so about probably like 80 to 100 
and then we had a few uh, alumni there for you know sp uh, sponsoring us and making sure that we're staying in line as students. <laughs> what other um, trips stand out? Um, conferences. I, I went to one in it's called Masu Midwest uh, Asian American Association of Student Unions, and it took place in Minnesota. And this only comes to mind because it's just crazy the power of networking and, and how things come for, full circle. I met a whole bunch of folks there. There was a guy that was like a, a dancer, and he uh, showcased uh, after one of the conferences. They had an event, a talent show event, and I'm getting to know him. Um, and now, he, uh, you know, I live in LA, and he's on he's on some pretty big shows in LA as an actor, and he does a lot of dance stuff too. So that that was a pretty cool experience, just to see a full circle with a lot of people that you meet. And my network's gotten so big just from all the Asian organizations and all the events that we would travel to. And you know, I met people from all over all over the world, all over the United States through that. And that's pretty cool to to be a part of. And then the Office of Multicultural Affairs, you've mentioned the um, Asian American Student Organization. Yeah. So, so you were you active in that all through your college years here? Yeah, I was very active in that from day one. Um, I was a member of uh, ASA, which is the Asian American Student Association. Mm -hmm. And I was also a member of VASA, which is the Vietnamese American Student Association. I'm not Vietnamese myself, but I really like the culture and my best friend in college at the time was Vietnamese. Um, he was the president of the Vietnamese American Student Association, and, and I was as well. Um, and that was just a great, uh, I think that was my first leadership experience that I've had at Oklahoma State. And that was just a great opportunity to learn how to be a leader, learn how to manage events, learn how to manage a budget, um, learn how to help hear the voice of the students and make it stronger. Um, you know, being the voice to all the advisors and Dr. Kirksey for all the minorities that wanted to do activities on campus. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. And how many students were active in those two organizations about that you recall? You know, I think at the time there was like 40 to 50 in each group, or maybe a little less than that, and it would fluctuate throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one thing that I've noticed, you know, being on campus just for the day, you know, today I've been back in like five, six years, there is a huge increase of diverse students on this campus compared to whenever I was here. And it made me smile so big to see all the different ethnicities and walks of life on our campus represented. I know that we had a good presence in the past, but it's even stronger and better now, which shows that all the great work that the Institutional Diversity Department's doing. And it just makes my heart really warm knowing that I was part of that impact for the future. What year did you graduate? 2013. Okay, so it's been five years then. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been back? in that amount of time? Or I've, your I've first not, it's my first time back. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of changes, a lot of construction, <laughs> a lot of new faculty, um, mm -hmm. and, but it was really great to see familiar faces here. Does anything else stand out to you about um, any of the student organizations you were active in? You know, the two of them were, were really fun to be a part of. Um, my friend Jeremiah Lane, he started an organization out here, um, I think it was a year before I graduated, called Dance Marathon. And he he let me join his kind of founding group of folks that helped kickstart that up. And it's like a, a 24 hour dance off where, where students will raise money all throughout the year. And then they have one big event at the Colvin Annex where they all come together and play music and have performances and DJs. And, and they're on their feet for 24 hours, continuing to raise money and dancing for kids that can't dance. And they'll bring uh, sick kids from the Children's Hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma City in. And they're part of it too. And all the proceeds go directly to the hospital. And being a part of something like that, we were competing with Relay for Life, which was very big on our campus at the time, and other student groups. And we were like, oh, we, we might not make that much money. And I remember the first year it was like 37. The second year was like, Think like 40 the 30 or 70 and then now they're up past six figures every year and it's just amazing how, how that has grown and it makes me so happy to see videos pop up randomly on social media of, of you know previous alumni sharing their experiences and stuff um, that was just really really cool that that's still standing and very strong here that's great mm -hmm. that was called dance marathon dance marathon okay and another one that I was part of was more kind of like an initiative. I met an a individual, he was a transfer student from OU named Patrick Combs, still one of my best friends to this day. He wanted to bring um, sustainable water filters to our campus. And so now that whenever you walk around campus, you see all the water filtration systems hooked up to the, all, all the uh, water fountains. That was myself and Patrick. 
and, and a team of a few other students too. We started that initiative through an organization called Net Impact. And I believe that organization still exists in the business school. Um, um, professor, is it Pappas? He's the marketing professor over there. I think he was the, the professor that was the sponsor of it in the beginning. Um, but we had an initiative where we just wanted to put six of them on campus. We were like, we'll get the money, just let us put it on. And we, we battled the student union because they were like, you're taking away from our water bottle sales. Uh, and things like that. Too bad I would have cut that out. <laughs> oh, no, it's but, okay. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, th that was just, th I learned so much in that experience because I wasn't taking into consideration how does sales work for a university? H how are they making their money? I was just like, this is good for the environment. We want to do this now. And looking back at it, you know, now that I've worked for a few years, I, I can see like, oh, we probably shouldn't have been as aggressive with a, a few approaches that we had. But that was just really cool to be a part of um, installing those water filters and seeing students use them and, and just hearing students in the hallway like, wow, we need to get more of these. You know, we would just sit back and smile. It's like, we're working on it. <laughs> what did it cost to get those? Oh, I don't remember. At the time, they were really expensive. The prices have gone down significantly because they were just freshly starting out. It was a couple grand. Um, and then and then we, we got uh, Mitch Kokris, who ran the student union. We got him to agree to let us install six of them if we all sat down. We all sat down and we had a map and we pinpointed where we wanted to put them. And he had to agree that there was none of his shops in the areas that we that would affect his water bottle sales. And then within two or three years, the traction built up so quickly with the students and they loved it, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, now they have them everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's all over campus. And so I'm really proud that that is still here um, and, and that I was a part of that at the school too. Good. And your friend Patrick, what was his last name? Combs, C O M B S. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, were you also involved with the Inclusion Center for Academic Excellence? I was not. Okay. Yeah. Was okay. that the tutoring program that, that they had, right? So. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't do that. Okay. I probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> So you've mentioned several role models in your time here, Dr. Kirksey, mm -hmm. um, your advisor, and um, does anyone else come to mind when you think about role models as far as faculty or staff goes? You know, I mentioned Dr. Bird in the past, yes. and I worked in her office for about a year. Um, I ended up meeting all the, the other workers that are in the office. We all still communicate and stay in touch to this day. You know, that office had a very strong bond, and working for Dr. Bird, taught me more than I would have ever thought. You know, I didn't know at the time as much that I was like, you know, you know, after you graduate, you leave, you're like, you know, I learned a lot from working for that person, but I didn't appreciate it at the time. And, and working for Dr. Bird, she taught me so much about project management because she had so many things going on so many times and she wanted to get things done. Dr. Bird, mission was it's done today, not tomorrow, right? And, and, and so learning that from her and learning how to manage projects and initiatives and even helping her start create, uh, create her dog park that she has out here today. Um, I, was, I was the one that helped her get that set up as well. Um, it's crucial, right? Like those are skills that I would never learn in the classroom. And I'm so appreciative for working for Dr. Bird to learn really strong product management skills. Have you had an opportunity to share that with her? I have not. Um, I, you know, I, I've tried to reach her by phone a few times. Um, when I was working at at and I worked on Randall Stevenson. He's the CEO of at and uh, and his communications team. He actually went to Oklahoma State um, for one year before he dropped out of college and went to UCO. And he had he said, I had this econ professor, a math professor there. I really want to get in touch with him. Go find out who, who it was. And I'm like, this is whenever Oklahoma State was called Oklahoma A&M. Oh. And I had called the provost's office, cold call. They directed me up to Dr. Bird's office. I was like, hey, Dr. Bird, it's David. And I talked to her for like 20 minutes. Uh, and that, that interaction, that was probably a year after I graduated. Uh -huh. but, but since then, no, I have not. And, um, I heard she's retiring soon, so I hope to yes. make it back for her retirement party. Okay, good. We'll have yeah. to make sure you, you get the information on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... You've mentioned the library a few times, so tell me your, about your memories of the library. Whenever I was a microbiology major, my friend Justin and I, we would sit in the library um, studying nights and nights on end. Uh, I, I remember one time it's like, hey, you want to hang out? It's like, oh yeah, let's just go hang out in the library. <laughs> and this ended up becoming our hangout spot, because when I was a micro major, there was so much studying that had to be done. 
And I remember I'd rack my brains for six to seven hours at a time whenever I was taking organic chemistry. Also one of the hardest classes I've ever taken at this school. And Justin and I would just sit there and be in a daze. And they'd be like, library's closing. And we're like, oh, already? <laughs> so it was a lot of a lot of time spent here. Um, the library is so comfortable and so quiet. And my favorite part of the library was dead week. The fact that it was open 24 hours a day was amazing because that way you could go to class throughout the day. And then, you know, you could have all night to study before the test in the morning. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was huge. You know, I'd rather study in the library than my own dorm room or my own apartment just because you can really focus here and the library has so many cool books to read and, and things to check out whenever you take a break I think that was my favorite part is whenever you wanted to get away from what you were studying you could easily go find something to pick up and read um, and the collections here are huge and you could always find a really cool secret spot to hide and read or, or study that's what I love the, mo the most about the library what were some of your favorite spots to uh, the Same basement. Time. Nobody goes down to the basement. <laughs> so they, they would have these um, these like wooden cube. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't explored the library, yet, but they had these like wooden cube desks mm -hmm. that would like come out on the side. Mm -hmm. and, and I would just go find one in the basement and just crouch there. And, like no one could find you and move it around and just study. And it's just like so quiet down there. You hear a pen drop or anything. Um, that was one of my favorite spots. And the other spot is up on the second floor that looks outside on the library lawn. That was also one of my favorite spots because you could always see if something was going on on campus, um, if people were out doing things or if they were giving away like free food, you could always run down while you were studying. And so I, I always like that mm -hmm. about our campus. Well, good. You'll have to take a look around and see the changes in the library. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, my background on my work laptop is the library and it has been for the last five years. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Well, we have a creative studio now on the first floor. Oh, awesome. With virtual reality and... Um, well, that's cool. Yeah, a mixing machine for music and 3D printers and... Wow, yeah. that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might appreciate that. Makes me want to come back. <laughs> uh, what other particular buildings on campus stand out to you for your time here? You know, the Paul Miller School of Journalism building I love that school. Um, that, that, that building has changed my life tremendously just because of the professors that were part of it. Uh, I really wish they would update it. <laughs> it, looks, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> you see a lot of uh, changes on campus. Um, I, I looked at the outside of the new business school building. That looks amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the new changes to the union are, are phenomenal. I spent a lot of time in campus life um, at the cubicles over there near Kent Sampson's office. He, he was also crucial to my, my time here. Um, I heard he retired a few years ago. That man is the kindest, most down-to-earth hearted guy I've ever met in my life that he truly cares about you. Whenever I was here um, in my, my, last, my second to last year, my, my senior year before my super senior year, I ran for SGA president. And we ended up having three runoffs, which has never happened before. I won the first two and lost the last one. And Kent, Samson and a few other professors, you know, they're they're so funny. They would be like, "We're gonna we're gonna try to figure out how we can turn this around." And it's like it's a student run thing. You guys can't get involved, you know. <laughs> but Kent was so encouraging through that time. That time was really hard for me. It's um, I really wanted to get that, and I really wanted to help make a lot of change on campus because I was doing so well with the diversity department. I I wanted to make a bigger impact for the whole campus as a whole. Um, so I was working toward that. I had a, a campaign team of about 60 people. It was phenomenal that the people that worked on my campaign that were so passionate about what I believed in and the things that I wanted to try to do on this campus. Um, I'm still amazed that people, people followed me whenever they didn't have to, they weren't getting paid. There was no resume builder or anything. It was just organic. They want to help. Um, and that's what I love about Oklahoma State and the Stillwater community. No matter what goes on, whether it's a tragic accident, whether it's a student passing, whether it's, you know, something good, something to celebrate, the community always gets together and it's there for each other. And that's what I love the most about Oklahoma State. When you, uh, when you were transitioning in here as a freshman, did you go to Camp Cowboy or, or do anything in particular like that? I, I did not. Um, I heard about Camp Cowboy. I, I really didn't know what it was until I became an orientation leader. Mm -hmm. And whenever I was an orientation leader, I learned about Camp Cowboy and really regretted not going. <laughs> How many years did you do the orientation leader? Uh, just one summer. One summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that was that was one of the most fun jobs I've had on campus too. And, you know, it, it was it's very hard work to, to be an orientation leader, and it takes a lot of, of sweat and tears 
to do it, but to be that first impression for a student is, is huge. I actually still keep in contact with some of the students that I gave, because I was also a campus tour guide. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I still keep in touch with some of the students that I, I talked them into coming to Oklahoma State. Uh, there's, there's some good friends to this day. So part of your job as orientation leader was to give campus tours. What were some of the other activities that you were involved in? Yeah, uh, helping students sign up for classes, which was really fun because I, I, like if they were in my major or if they were in arts and sciences, I'd be like, all right, this is a really great professor. This is a great course to take. So being able to be that person that a new student looks up to when they're so lost and, and be able to calm them down was rewarding, right? It was really cool to, to be like, oh, I've been in your shoes. Let me, let me help you out. <laughs> Um, I love being an orientation leader and working with Missy and Pavi. Mm -hmm. They're phenomenal bosses to, to, to have under the department. Uh, what were the um, relations between faculty and students or students in administration uh, here when you were here? Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. You know, uh, President Hargis, um, all the way down to, you know, the, the regular typical um, department advisors. You could walk into anyone's office and get the time of day to talk about anything you wanted to. I don't know if it's like that anymore, <laughs> but um, yeah, I remember one time, you know, we wanted to go talk to Dr. Kirksey about something, and we just kind of walked in his office, and he was had an open door policy, and it was great. Um, I know President Harkis is like that too. If students want to come talk, he's always been open, and so has Anne. I think that's the coolest thing about Anne is whenever you see her driving the golf cart around campus, she'll stop and talk to you, and if you have like a question or a concern or you want to ask about something she's very open and honest she'll give you a ride and say come on let me drive you to your class and, and i love that experience just to interact with them because mm -hmm. once you get out and once i went to the work or the corporate world and worked you didn't get that direct line of sight to higher ups to that would actually make an impact and would want to listen to the the people that were involved with the process and so the fact that burns and ann are, are able to you know, harness that here and show everyone we're transparent. It's an open door to Oklahoma State. Tell us what you guys want to see here. That That's really cool. I always felt that if you wanted to do something at this school, you could always do it. You would always have the support to do it. What about um, Stillwater, the city of Stillwater, and favorite spots or um, any activities or anything you were involved in? You said the dog park, you were involved in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I helped out a little bit with that whenever Dr. Bird was first starting it up. Uh, when it, I, I helped put some signs up out there whenever she was putting the fence up. That was a really cool project to be a part of. Um, within the community, you know, Dance Marathon, that, that you know, we, we worked a lot with the local community with that activity too. Um, Stillwater as well. I live next to the mayor, uh, the guy that was a student at the time a couple years back. I forgot what his name was. We can fill that in later. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I live next to him. He was, he was a student. He was a student and a mayor, which was really interesting. Uh, I, I wonder what his day-to-day -day life was like going to class and then shifting to the mayoral du duties <laughs> at the time. Um, but yeah, with community involvement, I think the only thing we're dance marathon and then dog park stuff. Do you have any favorite community hangouts? Uh, my favorite community hangouts, probably College Bar, Stonewall, Murphy's, Cafe 88, amazing Asian food, and then uh, Thai Cafe's Coconut Crusted Chicken. I've been dreaming of that for the last five years. <laughs> I'll help you get to go. <laughs> I hope I get to go too. And you know, hideaway pizza is always, a, a, you have to stop there whenever you come into town. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree, yeah. Um, you had, you've got quite an amazing resume and uh, interesting career um, titles and projects and activities that, that you've uh, done with AT&T. Um, are there any areas in which you wish that you would have had more training to help you in your career? Definitely. You know, I, th I think it's like those life skills that I've learned um, being being in organizations and, and part of the institutional diversity department, like those types of skills with project management, um, managing a budget and a, fi a financial spreadsheet is huge, right? Like those are skills that I, I wish that I learned in the classroom. So I learned it the correct way. But, you know, I learned those same skills being involved with student organizations and it, and it may not have been the correct way to manage a budget, but at least I was exposed to how it works. And I really think that those experiences in the student organizations that I was involved with 
really transfer over to my corporate life and, and like skills like attention to detail, uh, managing a project. I did I do a lot of event management with my job, and so I was able to plan events just right away. You know, once I joined the company, and so a lot of these skills um, are definitely transferable. I would say one thing that I wish I learned is probably the vast opportunities that's out there in the world. It's just so many things to learn and to do, especially with the rapid change of technology. I really wish that we had more exposure to real world companies while I was here. I think that's probably the one one piece. And I'm actually trying to figure out how to bring that back. I met with um, a few folks on campus today to see how, how can I help teach you guys more about you know, entertainment, technology, the media services. Is there any classes that are teaching the students that now? And can I come and speak about my experience? Because that is one piece that I really missed in the classes. Whenever I took Bill Handy's class and, and the PR 101 class, he had guest speakers come in and talk about their, their experience at an agency or former students come in. That's huge. I, I really wish more, more departments and more majors did that. And I didn't see that in some of the other departments like with microbiology it's just kind of like you go to class and you study um, but the journalism department I think that is why it caught my eye so much too is because a lot of those professors and faculty have that real world experience and, and you're able they're able to coach you in a different way that someone that hasn't worked in the industry won't be able to coach you tell me a little bit about um, working as a communications intern uh, for consumer engagement and crisis for Fleshman Hiller? Yeah. So I got that, that getting the internship is a funny story. Um, I had a friend that went to the career fair. I missed it because I was working. And he said, hey, I, I met this uh, girl named Sarah. She works at an agency called Fleshman Hiller. I really think you should check it out because that's whenever I trans transitioned my major over um, to public relations. And that was whenever I had lost for student government for the third time. So I was pretty down and, and it was kind of like, uh, I guess I'll see, because my summer plans were to be here on campus working with all the student government stuff, because I had thought I had won. And um, now I was looking for something to do in the summer and he had given me Sarah's email address at Fleshman, sent her an email and said, hey, I'm very interested. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it to the career fair. I've attached my resume. I have a little bit of communications experience. Um, I worked for Cowboy Technologies that does the app competition as well, I worked for there for about a year doing all their PR and advertising. And I said, I have a little bit of experience. I love to work for a company like Fleshman Hillard and gain some knowledge. And um, Sarah, okay, let's talk, let's have an interview. I interviewed, uh, turns out she went to Oklahoma State. Um, her, her name is Sarah Solomon and she goes by Sarah Burkett now. And I had worked for her for the summer on AT&T. I had various clients as a consumer engagement intern. I had AT&T USAA, which is an insurance company and I had General Motors, um, and my main job was crisis communications for General Motors. It was a time whenever cars were catching on fire, and I was tasked, I was the only intern tasked with being proactive and reacting to all the messages and helping them frame up, like, what should we respond with? And that, that really changed my whole career. Um, I was actually sitting at my desk one day in this internship, had my Oklahoma State stuff on my desk. It's, it's something that Dr. Bird had given me a long time ago, and it's sitting there on my desk, and this guy walks around the corner and he's like, hey, go Pokes. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Like uh, Fleshman's based in Dallas, the office I worked at. I'm just kind of typing away, doing my thing. And hey, can I, can I sit next to you? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. This guy sat next to me. And uh, he's like, I went to Oklahoma State too. Oh, that's really cool. Like, what did you study? Oh, I studied public relations. Oh, that's what I'm doing right now. It's like, oh, my daughter also studied public relations. It's like, Who, who's, your, who's your daughter? Oh, my daughter's Sarah. So this gentleman was Sarah's dad. And I didn't really know too much about him. I spent the day, he sat next to me in my little cubicle at this agency, and we we're working on some things. And he gave me his card and said, hey, let's stay in touch. Um, you know, you have about a year left to graduate. Let's, just, let's just keep in contact. So I talked to him every couple months on the phone just to interact with him. He was an executive at AT&T, um, leading up the corporate communications department. And um, about two weeks before graduation, I already had an offer to move to San Francisco. I was gonna go work at an agency on a Microsoft account, and Saul, uh, Larry Solomon had called me, he goes by Saul, he had said, hey, I have an opportunity for you in Dallas. Do you, are, you, are you up for it? You want, to submit, you want to submit your resume? And I was like, that'd be great. So I got my resume in, I did, did the interviews, ended up get, accepting the offer, and that's how I uh, ended up working on the chairman's communications team at AT&T, is through, through Larry Solomon, and by meeting his daughter. 
you know, without losing the student government the third time, I wouldn't have had my pathway to my career. That's great. And so it's, it's um, I, I think back to those moments of frustrations and, and uh, sadness, happiness over the last couple of years and experiences. And, you know, I, I can smile looking back at it now and seeing how everything lined up for, for a specific reason. Mm-hmm. And so it's just great to kind of get that closer to. <laughs> So what was the OSU thing sitting on your desk? Um, it's just a wire cutout of o- OSU in orange. And it's oh. just like a, like a, something you just keep on your desk. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll take a picture. I still, have, I still keep it at my desk to this day. And that has been a huge conversation starter um, for, for many, many people. And I've met other Oklahoma State alum through it. Um, I have a mentor who, who was formerly Pistol Pete here mm-hmm. um, as, as an OSU alum. His name was Ryan Stafford. Um, he mentors me still in my career and helps me a lot with a lot of my career decisions. And, and Larry Solomon as well. He's he's been very instrumental to my career at that company. Um, and it was funny whenever I moved to LA about a year into my job in LA, I had my same tchotchke on my desk. And this uh, developer walks by because I was in product product management. Developer walks by and said, "Go pokes." I've never heard those words uttered out of anyone's mouth in my LA office before. And I stopped and I was like, "Hey." Let's talk, man. Let's grab some coffee. He was an international student here while, while I was here, too. We went here at the same time. Uh, we, we knew some of the same people, but we didn't know each other. So that was just really cool to see the power of Oklahoma State is, is all literally all throughout the world. And, I, you know, I travel a lot, um, too. And, and I was in Hawaii a couple months ago, and I ran into a, a former Oklahoma State alumni at a, a bar in Hawaii, too. So it's just crazy that the power of OSU is everywhere. You don't know when you're going to see someone again. And, and whenever you do, it's just like old times. And, you know, everyone that goes to Oklahoma State, I really feel like they always are out to help each other. Very good. Um, okay, you mentioned the Cowboy Technologies. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, one aspect of that is research. Right, and it's developing products uh, that come out of research uh, initiatives or endeavors. So, um, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I got that opportunity after working for Dr. Bird. Um, it was kind of the next job that I had lined up while I was a student, a part time job. And I worked for Steve Wood, who was the CEO um, of, of Cowboy Technologies at the time, directly as his uh, head communications, marketing, and advertising. Uh, intern. And so with that experience, I was tasked with helping um, four different startup companies research traditional media, social media, what are some marketing tactics and advertising tactics that they could kind of pull together to kickstart their business. And so they were, you know, faculty or um, local people in the area that we worked with. I think one was like a canna lily project that I worked on, water filtration. Um, One was tech development, and I can't remember the fourth one right now. But that, that experience was really cool. It was my first true corporate type of experience that I've had that really set the stage of, of kind of an office job for me. You know, um, working for Dr. Bird was hands-on. You were moving around doing a lot of activities. But with Cowboy Technologies, I, I was there. I was, I was doing the work. Um, and without that experience, I, I honestly don't think I would have had the opportunity at Fleshman Hillard um, to, get, to get in my shoe into that internship either. And so... And how long did you work for Cowboy Technologies? For one year. One year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I saw on your resume that you have gone on to earn an MBA yes. from Pepperdine University. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so while I was working for Randall Stevenson on the chairman's team, um, he had a big speech about retooling yourself for the future because technology is rapidly changing and we have to stay at our A game as a company. And um, he talked to our team about staying on your A game on a personal level. Like, are you educating yourself enough to make sure that if the business shifts, you're ready to jump into any role that comes up that you can be like, hey, I'm here, I have the skills needed, put me in it. And so um, he had talked to, you know, I, I got some one-on-one time with him every couple of weeks and he had talked to me about getting my MBA. So have you ever thought about going to grad school or, or, or you know, furthering your education or taking some courses or certificates? And I had, you know, thought about it and I said, you know, I, I thought about going to grad school for, for communications. And, um, you know, talking to him and my other mentors, they, they suggested an MBA might be a little more beneficial for what I wanted to do and, and staying in corporate long term. And so I had applied to Pepperdine. Um, 
I got accepted and I did that while I was working full time on the nights and the weekends. And then I had to fly out to LA for classes. Um, I did that for a year and then I ended up transferring to the LA office after my company had bought Direct TV in 2015 and I finished my second year uh, in person over there at Pepperdine. So what was your experience at Pepperdine like? It was great. You know, that, that campus is amazing. It's beautiful. It, it's one of the most beautiful campuses that overlook the ocean that I have found. Oklahoma State is still the most beautiful campus in my opinion, but it was really cool that that overlooked the water. Um, the people weren't as friendly and as nice as they are here in Oklahoma or in Stillwater. There's a huge cultural shift that I, I just wasn't expecting. You know, at Oklahoma State, my first day here was, hey, there's so many cool things to be a part of and do. We're all a community, like we're here to have fun and learn. Um, but at Pepperdine, it was more of like, we're all about business, give us your money, come here for the education and see you later. Um, that school is a private Christian school. Um, they have great, great educational program for MBA students, um, but I feel like their, their campus life wasn't as lively as Oklahoma State's. And, and, and that made me really miss Oklahoma State uh, and the community here. And I, and I saw that they launched an MBA program a couple years ago too, that's doing really well. Kind of like, I should, maybe I should have thought about coming, <laughs> coming back. <laughs> What significant experiences or events, good or bad, occurred during your time here at OSU? You mentioned the, the heartbreak of the SGA election and how that turned out, but how looking back now and reflecting on it, you can see that it actually did lead to some really good things for you. Are there any other significant experiences or events come to mind? that I can think of. Okay. I think that was mostly it. That SGA, studying abroad, orientation leader. Yeah. Okay, um, I noticed also that you um, earned the service cord for graduation. I did. And so that requires at least 400 hours of community service. So tell me a little bit about um, that, what you went through earning that cord. Yeah, you know, it was so great that the school offers that opportunity to earn service cords for graduation. Um, and, you know, I've always spent my time giving back to the community, and I just didn't know that there was a way to record it. And so once I found out um, through Joyce Montgomery that you're able to record and log your hours, um, I had so much just from all the campus uh, involvement that I was in, all the activities we did, all the community events that we had helped out with. Um, like the cleanup days um, and dance marathon was a huge part of that. You know, all the, all the community service hours that go into putting on an event like that is, is huge. And that was a big chunk of getting that service award. When you think about graduation day, what comes to your mind? Happiness. I, I just remember seeing all my, my peers and all of us just smiling, just ready to take on the world, not knowing what we were going to get ourselves into. Um, that mere, that moment of uh, pure bliss, right? Like, I am so happy I made it. I cannot wait for the next chapter in my life. Um, and I just remember walking across that stage thinking, don't trip, <laughs> don't trip. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about some of the honors and awards that you've received over the years. Um, of course, you're, you're back here at homecoming because you're, um, you're going to get an award this evening, the Rising Star Award which is through the OSU Diversity Hall of Fame, which is a wonderful honor. Yeah. Um, so when did you find out that you were receiving the award? How did the nomination work? Yeah, I found out a couple months ago mm -hmm. um, that I was being nominated. I didn't, I didn't ever think that I would get the award itself, actually. And um, it was funny because a lot of Oklahoma State alumni keep their uh, emails active. And I just kind of dropped mine off. I just never stopped checking it. And I never followed up to give anyone in the, in the diversity department my email. And so I guess Dr. Kirksey had been emailing me telling me to submit a nomination, but I wasn't getting it. So he jumped, he got a message from him on LinkedIn one day. 
He's like, hey, is this still your email? <laughs> it was just so funny, the interaction, right? I was like, yeah, it's still my email. I still have the same phone number. Uh, and he, he had thought I had changed it too, right? Mm -hmm. And so he had sent me it over and he's like, hey, put, put some stuff together. You know, we would love to consider you for a nomination. Um, a few folks have put your name in the hat. And I was very curious to know who, who was putting my name in the hat, but he wouldn't tell me. Mm -hmm. um, and I submitted my package up and a, a few weeks later, I, I found out that I got it. And, I was shocked myself. I remember calling uh, Miss Vijay Kumar and telling her about it. And she's like, I'm so glad you won it. And so I, I didn't realize how big of a, a honor this is to get this type of an award. And the, the group of, of folks that I'm gonna be kind of inducted with, it, it's, oh, I can't believe I'm part of this group. It's, it's amazing. It's a wonderful honor. Are there any other awards that um, you've received over the years? I got the President Service Volunteer Award um, from President Obama. Um, you know that one that if you complete a certain amount of hours, you get a coin. It's like the gold, silver, bronze levels. I got the silver level, level award um, about a year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that's really it. I wish my company gave more awards out. <laughs> <laughs> so what type of um, volunteer activities are you currently involved in or have you been in the past few years? Yeah, yeah. Um, last year, my so every year I try to shift and change a different organization. So last year I helped out an organization in LA called US Vets and it helps put uh, homeless veterans that ended up in LA, um, get them back on their feet. They have an apartment building where they'll house them and take care of them and provide basic necessities. Um, and a few of us will go in and help them out with res the resume. Um, that's a new program that they just started. Um, and, and what we did at at and is I helped gather a group of folks to do care packages for them. And so just to make sure that if they did come into U.S. Vets, they could take a care package and leave if they didn't want to leave. Um, you know, U.S. Vets is not there to force them to change, but just to be a resource if they do want to get back on their feet. Um, and this year, focusing more on the American Heart Association um, with the Heart Walk, um, trying to find out how I can be more involved with that. And I uh, just recently started with Movember, which is a men's prostate awareness foundation. And so just try to keep active in the little things here and there. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, after Oklahoma State, I was really involved with the Children's Hospital still mm -hmm. and um, the Wounded Warrior Project. So just coming from a military family, I try to always, you know, every time I see a veteran cause, I think of one if this was my brother, one if this was my dad, my uncle, I have a lot of friends in the military. Um, I don't want ever, them to ever be in a place like that. So I think that's why I always stick towards those types of organizations. So tell me a little bit about your about your career and what your uh, looks like you just changed roles recently earlier this year. Yeah. I did, I did. Um, so I, I started off at at and you know, on the chairman's team, did that for about three and a half years. That consisted of speech writing, event management, internal and external events, whenever he would travel, uh, maintaining all his logistical information with his drivers, bodyguards. He who? Um, Randall Stevenson, okay. he's the CEO of at and mm -hmm. And um, bodyguards, drivers, um, hotel staff, if we were at a hotel event, um, doing sweet, sweet, uh, secret service, former secret service guys that we have hired on. So it was a lot of really cool opportunities and interactions. Um, I've got to meet so many people that I never ever thought I'd have the opportunity to meet in that role. Um, I would say the most significant person that I think that I've met is General Colin Powell and President Bill Clinton. Um, that was a huge, huge accomplishment in my book for myself, just to shake hands and sit next to them in a very intimate room and have a conversation was, was mind blowing. I never ever thought I'd have that opportunity um, at all in my career. And after that, when, once my company bought DirecTV, I went and became a chief of staff to our chief content officer. And he oversees all the programming and content rights for all the DirecTV platforms, DirecTV, DirecTV Now, Uverse. Um, so, you know, getting a channel onto that platform takes a lot of paperwork and contracts and negotiation. So I did that for about two years, and now I'm in the product organization. I'm a senior product manager, building out features for DirecTV Now, which is an over-the-top platform, similar to like Netflix, Hulu, PlayStation Sling. Those are kind of our competitors. Um, and, I'm, and I'm still also a chief of staff, and I'm a chief of staff to our senior vice president of product management. And just a temporary role that they kind of threw me in because I've had experience doing it in the past. 
Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's been a really cool opportunity at at and 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 the way that the industry has been shifting drastically and uh, the opportunities that have come up for me, you know, through Oklahoma State alumni connections or um, through industry folks that I've met, it's just can't be more grateful than that. What advice would you give to OSU students today? Be open-minded. Be flexible with your career. Things shift, things change. It's going to be okay. Don't stress out because life will shape itself the way it's meant to be shaped. If I could tell myself that as a senior, to to not not worry, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that I would have saved myself a lot of stress and anxiety that came with job searching, finding a job, um, things like that. And there are so many resources at your fingertips that I didn't utilize as a senior, like the Career Center, I should have used them more. I should have utilized my faculty and professors to, to help enhance my resume and build it more. Um, I even should have used, used the faculty and staff to, to see if they knew anyone to help me get a job. You know, those are the things that I look back on and if I could improve my experience here is um, network as much as you can whether it's the faculty, younger students, older students, you never know who you're gonna cross, whose path you're gonna cross. And if you have one, and you'll have one or two degrees of separation with that person usually, which has been really good, and so. How would you like to be remembered? I think I want to be remembered, I, I would like my legacy to be someone that has always been a calm and open and transparent person, someone that gets the job done whenever they're tasked with something to do and someone that's accountable. Okay, that's very good. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you would like to add in with the interview? There was one thing that came up. I just don't remember it right now. You talked about study abroad. I wasn't too involved with sports here. You weren't? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that I can't really think of anything that comes to mind. Or did you participate in homecoming when you were a student here? I did not. I was not part of Greek life. But did you go to the walk around and do things like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. I did go to the walk around. Mm-hmm. And the walk around's amazing. And the parade is phenomenal. The amount of effort and work that Greek life puts into that is huge. Um, yeah. I, I, do student organizations still participate in homecoming activities? I think they did a little bit in the past. Yeah, the, all the signs out on the lawn, there are a number of those that student organizations oh, did. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot more than I remember from the past because before it used to just be one row and now it's like three or four, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the garden is so beautiful and they've really upgraded that garden since I've been, been back too. Um, Whenever I was here, it used to be a thing um, that Greek, I, I don't know if it was a, an organization or a group that would do this, but I remember that like to be initiated into something they would throw you into Theta Pond. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of that. <laughs> I'm glad I never had to had the luxury to go into Theta Pond. I'm I'm happy for that. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> yeah. Campus traditions. When you, you know, back. Knowing knowing the fight song, mm-hmm. and even the song of Oklahoma is, is key here. Um, if you don't know the song or the hand movements, you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to the football games or basketball games? I did, yeah. Game? Yeah, I went to I went to the football games. Um, I, I didn't go to any, I probably went to like one basketball game. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I was involved with, um, do you remember that campaign, Remember the Four, the shirts? Yes. So Kyle B. Thod, I helped him a lot with that process. Mm-hmm. Um, in the stands, selling those t-shirts, helping design them up. That was a, a, an initiative that a lot of us in student government took on after that had happened. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that was a, another involvement that I don't really talk about too much just because it's a very sad moment in our, in our time. They're dedicating a statue tomorrow. Oh, over really? At the corner of Holland Bay. Oh, awesome. I'll um, have to check that out. Yeah, there's, um, I 
think it's at four bottle, I think maybe five o'clock. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's on the I'm sure it's on the OSU calendar. Yeah. But they'll have a statue dedication over there. So there's been uh, some good articles in the paper oh, awesome. recently about it. Yeah, okay. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. 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 Um covered all of the questions that I wanted to cover. Anything else come to your mind? Yeah, not that I can think of right now. Um, I worked for the disability office for a little bit, but I don't have too much memory there. That was my freshman year. <laughs> so it sounds like you you held jobs pretty much all through yeah. your time as a student here. I did, I did. I, I had I had some scholarships here while I was going here, but I had to pay my way through the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got, uh, yeah, I've had a job pretty much the whole time I was in, in college. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think my senior year, I was up to like close to like 30 hours a week, 40 hours a week, almost a full-time wow. job while going to school. And so that, that really helped prepare me a lot for the future too. Just mm -hmm. having work ethic and always being busy and, and wanting to do things. And summer jobs as well? Yes, and summer jobs as well. I didn't have one the year I studied abroad, but after that, I, I held them. Being in here in the summer is really nice because there's nobody around. <laughs> <laughs> Except it does get quite hot. <laughs> oh, it's so hot, especially being an orientation leader. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah I remember those very early humid muggy mornings <laughs> and i heard now they go from memorial day to july which is a whole extra month mm -hmm. um, compared to before so mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty busy yeah <laughs> well thank you for your time and for participating in the interview um congratulations on your award tonight i'm planning to attend the banquet oh, thank you look forward so, to seeing you um, excited for you for that and you uh, you had an amazing journey and career opportunity, and uh, it's just really been a blessing and pleasure for me to get to know you today through the interview. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Well, thank you.